Should you do a How giveaway? Long can you want to do a giveaway? We can order one online and send it to them. Oh, we could do that. Do a, do a small box. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so freaking good, guys. Um, it's Frederick Chocolates. Good morning, everyone. I woke up feeling a teeny bit ill this morning. I had planned to do a vlog of the three days that I'm kind of working this week because I'm working a shorter week. And I'm still gonna do that because I'm hoping that it's just because of the dryness in the air that my throat is hurting and that my eyes are a little bit puffy. And so I feel fine otherwise, I just didn't sleep very well. So it is currently early in the morning. Blaine is getting ready for school. Trent's there kind of prepping for him. And I have a Zoom call this morning to discuss complex needs literacy for all training. It's based on a book. We have three different sessions. And so myself and two other staff developers are gonna get together for a few hours to plan and discuss um, some of the sessions that we're gonna be doing. I think we're looking at trying to do a Schoology course with it, which is really cool. And yeah, so I'm gonna be jumping onto that really quick. But just to give you an idea for the week, I am mostly at home, but I thought it would be really interesting because tomorrow I am doing a service delivery. And so I figured I would show you guys this week, what does it look like for me prepping for that service delivery itself? It's gonna be with about 60 to 70-ish teachers. Um, I've been to this school many, many times before. They are all very, very wonderful. And I'm doing it on advanced phonics. So I'm prepping a lot of the materials. I'm gonna make sure everything is charged for tomorrow in the afternoon. It's only a two hour service delivery. So it's not a full day session, but at least still, you're gonna get an idea of what it looks like. So I am gonna get ready to hop onto my Zoom call, but I wanted just to say good morning. <laughs> I promise I'll look better a little bit later on in the video. <laughs> well, this is very interesting because our internet is out. It looks like they've been doing lots of little outages all around the area over the past few days. And currently it is our turn. So I am working off of phone data to get my computer going so that I can join in on the Zoom chat today. But I've got my soda, which is probably not the best for a sore throat, or maybe it is. I don't know, I guess we're gonna find out. And um, let's cross our fingers that I can be on the Zoom call the whole time. All right, just finished up my meeting. I also sent out two emails that I needed to send out. One is a reminder, um, just, to the point of contact for the service delivery that I'm doing tomorrow. And then for a team meeting that's happening next week, we always send a reminder um, to the school team um, just of the things that we're gonna be doing because we're working with a grant with them. So sent out those two emails because those were on my brain <laughs> during the entire meeting, but I got it done, which is all that matters. And the meeting itself went really well. We outlined a Schoology course that we're working on uh, for comprehensive needs for, it's like literacy for all comprehensive needs. And then we did some scheduling that we needed to do, started looking at day two presentation. So feeling really, really good there. But now I have some time before another meeting at two o'clock potentially another meeting at one o'clock. I'm not really sure yet, but I need to get some work done as far as the service delivery for tomorrow. And one of the things that we're doing is we're gonna play Heads Up. Oh, I'm so excited. So I have um, sandwich bags. I have a big Ziploc bag to get everything organized. And then I've also been getting things organized over here on my floor. Here's what that looks like. It's piles. <laughs> So um, I wanted them to have whiteboards, which this one I need to print out an extra one. So I have these all ready to go um, that we're gonna be working on. They have blank paper on the other side just so that we can use them as whiteboards because we're gonna be talking about multisyllabic words. I need to print and put a graphic organizer on that one. They have this packet which has notes resources, all of the different things that they need uh, for this presentation. And then I don't think I'm gonna have time to do this. So I don't believe I'm gonna take 
this with me. So I'll just end up storing this in the file cabinet a little bit later on. But we were going to look at some writing samples and have discussions about the assessment and how we can use this to guide our instructional practices. But we don't have time. So I'm not going to end up doing that. But I have that ready and then I just need to get um, my heads up printed and the Wi-Fi is officially working. So now that Wi-Fi is working, I have the ability to print stuff, which is really important. So I'm going to get my colored paper out, start printing things, ah. cutting things up, getting things prepped for tomorrow. Walter, do you want to say good morning? Say good morning. Um, so good morning, everyone. It is the next day. I apologize for not really coming back. <laughs> I was trying to get so many things done. I ended up uh, creating two new sorts for the uh, session that I'm doing today. Because it is a session that's brand new that we have started to create it <laughs> for this specific service delivery that I'm doing. Um, I, I feel like my brain is just constantly thinking of, oh, well, what if we need extra time? We can do this sort and it can be more of a scaffolded progression versus feeling that I'm just dumping information on them. So I have two sorts that I created. One is going to be for them to sort the uh, T8 or CH versus TCH and look to see if they can find um, what's the rule or the pattern for identifying when we use CH or TCH. The other one is going to be, what is the other one? <laughs> I've already forgotten. Um, but there is a second one where it's doing something. Oh, uh, it's where we're taking for the word web activity. So I give them four different activities that we're going to talk about that support advanced phonics. So this is morpho morphology, etymology, syllabication, all of that understanding and putting it into practice. And so they're very small activities that they can incorporate in so many different ways. So the first thing we do is syllabication, which is pretty simple. The second one that we're going to have them do is going to be... Um, phoneme graphing mapping, which we've already done before, but I want to give them a little bit of extra practice. And I specifically want to go into the CH versus TCH, more of those like complex um, spelling patterns that we find out there for kind of the upper grades that they may not be super comfortable or familiar with on how to provide that instruction. And then the third one is going to be word matrix, what I, which I love me a good word matrix. And then the fourth one is a word web that goes along the same lines as a word matrix, but it's higher order thinking skills because they're gonna have to group them by likeness. So it's using the word please, and there's like so many, um, there's like four different groups that they have to be able to group them with. So husband went out and he had to get me some more cardstock because I ran out of cardstock for the heads up game that we're gonna be doing for prefixes. So I'm going to sit and cut these out so that I am all done. And then I'm gonna show you like my new little setup. Um, I spent last night doing a lot of cutting, so did my husband, which I very much appreciated him because I think we worked until like 7.30 in the evening. And um, I just had Harry Potter on in the background. It was wonderful and I just cut my little heart out. So I'm gonna finish these up. This shouldn't take me too, too long this morning. Okay, so Walter is not going to get out of the way. He's going to step all over. Um, what I decided to do is go ahead and quickly make um, some labels 
to go on all of the bags. That way I know what is what, <laughs> because obviously I was already forgetting. So I'm gonna very quickly take these and start to put them onto the bag so that I have them all separated. Okay, so these have officially been labeled. Every single bag is now have a label on it. Um, I'm glad that I decided to go ahead and do that because it's going to save me time in the future when I'm trying to figure out what things are. <laughs> so I have those done. I did have some extras. I was a dumb dumb and I did not even change the whatever. Who cares? I'm, I'm just unfortunately I'm wasting. Um, so I have all those ready. It's roughly for about 60 ish people, maybe a few more than that. Um, maybe like 64, 65 people. So that's how many I have inside of those bags. So I'll just have to kind of keep that in mind as, um, you know, I have either bigger audiences or whatever it might be. Okay, let's go through all of the materials that I have going on here. Okay, Walter, I love you, but you got to go, babies. Okay, so first things first, we're going to have an opening activity um, and it's going to be with heads up. They're going to have prefixes. I did give them a prefix cheat sheet on the inside. So I'm going to give them a little bit of time as we're passing things out. I'm going to do this one first and give them the directions to review these with a partner, kind of test each other, that kind of thing. I know, baby. I love, I, okay. He's right in my face. Um, do you need something? Do you need something? What do you need, babes? <laughs> oh my gosh. So that is going to be the opening activity there. Um, I have two other sorts that are going to be a part of it. One is a word web sort, which has um, many forms that have the base of please inside of it. And so they're going to have to group them by their likeness and their patterns that they have um, and kind of create like a, a, a word web, but more so just with um, a sort. And then this one is going to be CH versus TCH and looking at um, what is the pattern that they're going to see. So they're going to realize hopefully that it's um, stressed vowels is when we're going to use TCH. I'm pretty sure I said that right, but I'll double check my notes. I am not an expert in everything. I am just a vessel. Sometimes I mess up too. Okay. In here... I mentioned that I have like a multi-syllabic reading strategy. They can use this. I don't typically use a ton of these. Um, I just like a nice plain surface and I just teach my kids how to use a whiteboard. So we don't typically use a lot of the graphic organizers, but I'm offering it there for them anyways. I cut out some felt last night, which that was a huge, wonderful process. Um, but I'm glad that I found some felt in my basement because all my other stuff is kind of packed away and I didn't have access to it last night. So glad that I was able to find some. I'm pretty sure I used this for my boys when they were really little. I made them drag in costumes. Um, so every single one of these little dry erase pouches has one of these in it. Guys, am I going to regret having these pouches on the inside? I don't know. You tell me. I was trying to figure out a way to be able to organize it, pass things out super quick, especially with such a large group. Oh, I don't know. So I have uh, 60 of these ready to go. I have their um, packets down here, which is also ready to go. I am trying to figure out a really good way to be able to organize this and I just can't. So I'm going to just do my best and talk to you guys like this. Okay. So, um, over Black Friday, I purchased one of these things. What's nice about it is that it has four wheels on it. So it is a four wheel, um, like, utility cart type thing that breaks down. I typically will keep this inside of my car. This is the first time that I am using it. Um, and I am very, very excited about it. I forgot to lock. So I got to lock these in place. Okay. So it comes with this too, and I can cover it up or I can just leave it, um, to where it's just snapped on here. It's not a super secure if you're looking for something like this that has four wheels because it's just so much easier for life. I'm going to leave it in the description. Okay, so I have their packets. I have their pouches that we're going to be able to use. I'm going to put the games in next. So those are going to get packed in. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to take with me is candy. 
I just, I feel like when people bring candy, they just like you better. So <laughs> I'm just taking candy so that they can like me. Um, I did last night as well print out some notes just to kind of keep with me because again, I am not a huge expert when it comes to etymology, morphology, like understanding the origin. That's basically, that's etymology, but like understanding the origin of words. And we are going to get into it just a little bit in the very beginning um, before I start to dive into the activities, which I feel way more comfortable with because I was using the activities as a teacher. So I just want to make sure that I'm covering my bases and I just made all of my notes here. And those are ready to go. I have some dry erase markers. Um, and then I have a couple of other things that I'm going to show you, but I'm going to switch this around because this is really hurting my back. Okay. Inside of my backpack, I have my laptop, which is fully charged. I also have the entire session, all of the tabs bookmarked at the top and it's in a folder within a folder. The folder is called sessions on my bookmark spar. And then underneath that, it's like what session it is. So it's advanced phonics. I have my computer charger. This is a great check for me, by the way, to make sure I have all my stuff. I have an extension cord because I do need it for this place. And then um, I have a couple of other things. I'm taking some extra felt pads just in case. I don't know. All right. Um, I have this little setup. So... This is a makeup bag that my sister gave me before she ended up moving to Amsterdam with her husband. And inside of it are just all of my tech items. I have lots of cords, I have batteries, I have dongles, I have clickers, chargers, all the things, okay? But, so I'm gonna take that, that is in there, which is very important. But one of the other things that I wanted to have, <laughs> I'm going to pray that it works, um, is a microphone set up because I just can't yell over 60 adults. It's just so hard. So, um, my very wonderful husband bought me this. It is a mega boom three is what this one is called. And so with this and with this little device, which I actually use for Instagram videos, this is why I originally purchased this. I don't know what it's called. Hollyland. It's a Hollyland. So that's what it looks like Woo! on the inside. Um, you're, you didn't get to see that very well, but I can hook it up to my phone. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. So I'm going to turn this bad boy on just by pressing up here. Okay, um, I'm going to put this uh, maybe not so close to me. It's going to, it's going to be loud. I'm just going to tell you. So this will then connect to my phone like that. Um, it will automatically power. The blue light will come on. And then I am using an app that's called Megaphone. It's this one right here. So I think I paid like two bucks, three bucks for it, something. So I'm gonna click my output. Make sure. Gotta go to my settings first. And make sure my Bluetooth is connected. Go here. Seriously, I got this thing to work last night. Hmm. Megaphone, output. And no, cancel. Connect. Okay, it's connected. 
So why is my microphone thing not working? I mean, uh, it should be working. All right, I'm resetting it. That was kind of... Okay, I'm walking away, but I have the microphone and it's working to the speaker. So you can hear it. It sounds a little weird. Um... I don't think I can do anything else here. I don't know why it's not working with my other app. Oh wait, there it goes. Okay, so I have it working with my app. You can hear it there. So it's working, which is great because I need a microphone. <laughs> Okay, so what's really nice about it is that I can literally touch that little button there and it will mute and unmute the microphone when I need it. So I'm just gonna hope and pray that this thing works when I need it to work a little bit later on. Oh, now it's picking it up just from my phone. So if I hold my phone, I can still have a microphone and not do these. I mean, that's pretty cool. All right. So there's that. I have that. That is ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off to save all my battery. I'm just going to pray that everything works out when I need it the most, which is when I'm about to present. <laughs> okay. I was really nervous when it wasn't working, but I think I'm going to be okay. Um, so my backpack's ready. All of that is packed up and ready to go. And that big truck just scared the living daylights out of me and again it's four rollers so it makes it really easy for me to move it around so that's ready to go I'm gonna take that downstairs and now I just wait so I'm currently getting ready to go I have dressed and I went for something very very simple or than what I feel like I normally wear um, so I have these trousers, which are from Everlane. I've had them for a few years now. Really, really like them. They're nice and loose. Um, Madewell shirt, Everlane t-shirt, or like cardigan is from Madewell. Uh, and then birdies are my shoes. So this is my outfit, all brown. Uh, very plain. I match my couch, but it's comfy and I feel like it gets... The job done that's all that matters everything else is currently packed into my car so it's all ready to go i've looked at the presentation enough i just i get nervous it's inevitable i always get nervous right before i did pack a water bottle because i'm gonna need a lot of water um i took some medicine for my throat and it's already drying me out which is no bueno so i'm gonna hope that all goes well. Luckily, I have another staff developer there with me, so it's gonna be fine. It's it's gonna be fine. It's two hours. I got this. I could do this for two hours, right? It's gonna be totally fine. All right, I'm gonna stop convincing myself. I'll see you guys on the drive there. I've officially made it to the school, um, and I am waiting for my other partner person who is gonna be doing this session with me to arrive. So I think we still have about 10 minutes before we go in and there's like a staff meeting beforehand. So it's all gonna be just kind of, we're gonna figure it out as we go along. But the school's very cute. I really like it. It's a it's a charter school, but it's, it's really cute. Let me show it to you. So there's the school, super cute. 
think this is all part of it. I don't think that building back there is part of it. I think this is part of the school, but I'm not 100% sure to be honest, but there it is. That's where we're gonna be entering in. I'm very nervous. I always get nervous. And then uh, I start to kind of calm down afterwards, but um, yeah, I'm just gonna sit and wait for her and then we're gonna go in, get it going. Wish me luck. And then I will let you all know how it goes afterwards. <laughs> all right, bye. Okay. I'm done, I finished, and I'm back at home. Um, <clears throat> overall, the session itself went pretty good. I mean, we started 15 minutes late, so that took us down to an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> I think we covered the information that we needed to cover. It was quick and snappy. We got them into the activities, which is what I really wanted to do. We spit a good chunk there. Obviously, I wish there was more time. Obviously, I want to give people more opportunities to practice and activities and things like that, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> I did, I had a mistake, guys. I made a mistake and I am going to email back <clears throat> and make sure that I correct myself. <laughs> so we were doing a phoning grapheme, like mapping situation and so I would have the words and it would like have it covered up on all of the boxes where you would put like the the graphings for each of the phoneme sounds and <laughs> the word was wretch okay <laughs> I copied it wrong I didn't know it at the time that I copied it wrong I thought I copied it right <laughs> from the book but I did not I copied the graphemes wrong in the box. I put W and R separate. And I didn't realize it at the time. And so I'm standing up there and they're like, wait, doesn't it go together? This one teacher said it. <laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> um, and I'm like, and I, and I was trying to think it through and I was like, no, because this is how I copied it from the book, not realizing I copied it wrong. And, um, Y'all, I, I feel like it was one of those things in Mean Girls, right? Where she's trying to make fetch a thing. I was trying so hard to make W and R separate a thing. <laughs> I'm laughing about it now, but I'm kind of annoyed with myself <clears throat> because I started thinking, okay, well maybe it's because of like co-articulation, which is why the W and the R are not together in this situation. Mm -mm. W and R are together. It makes the R sound. <laughs> it's supposed to be together. Oh, Gina, I hate that I did that. But you know what? It's fine. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to send it in my follow-up email and tell them that I made a mistake. And I'm going to learn from it. It's a learning experience. <laughs> I tried really hard to make that a thing. I did. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so that was good. I mean, I think the activities were great. And I did mention, listen, I am not an expert at this. I can give you the activities that I use inside of the classroom. I can give you the information that I'm learning, but I am not an expert. And I'm not. I have to think things through. I have to process. I need to research. And even when I was using a lot of the activities inside of the classroom, I had to go and like dig through things. And even then I still had so many questions because the kids would ask questions and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Oh, Gina. Okay. But you know what? If that is the worst thing that I did today, it, it was a great day. Um, and uh, I was looking through some of my feedback. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to be sending a follow-up email. One of the other questions that I did get, because we did a word webbing sort with please so it was like please and then it had all of these like um when you're putting it with other morphemes like how does it change so pleasurable pleasure like how does please change from one to the other and so one of the questions i got was why does the ea change and we know that the ea changes for because it makes three different sounds e a and a um, but then the question was like, why? And I think it's because of the etymology. I think it's because of the origin in which these words are coming from. So the same thing is with like CH, um, CH says ch with Anglo-Saxon words 
it says sh with French words and it says k in Greek words like Christmas. So knowing the origin could also help you understand why certain words make certain sounds. And I'm pretty sure that I'm right on that, but I got to look it up. And I told her I would look it up and, and send it in my follow-up email. But anyways, it's just one of those things that it's an ever, there's so much information out there when it comes to um, understanding how words are formed that I, it's just, it's overwhelming. And so as a teacher, like trying to put this into your classroom, starting with the basics is important. <laughs> Not jumping into really big challenging stuff um, is really critical to make sure that your kids have a foundation to understand things. So start small and then grow and build it. Same thing with like syllabication. I start small, closed syllables. I do two closed syllables. I do an open and closed, you know, with two syllables only. And then I slowly start to move up to three and then introducing some of these other syllable types because you can't do all six of them together. It, it's so overwhelming and the kids are never going to learn it. So you have to build that confidence with starting with very basic words in the beginning. I said in the beginning too many times. So it's fine, right? <laughs> I hate that I messed up, but it's fine. I feel bad. Um, okay, so it is evening time. Trent had to run out to go to the grocery store and I'm gonna unpack my bin. Um, I have to go to a school tomorrow all day. <gasps> okay, so at this point it is evening. Uh, Trent ran out to the store. I have to unpack my bin. Um, and then get prepped and ready for tomorrow because I have to leave early. I have all day coaching at a school that I'm going to be doing for ECRI. So I need to make sure I have my papers ready. And if I end up opening up some of that stuff, I'll show it to you guys a little bit later. For now, I'm going to enjoy my Diet Coke. <laughs> and think about how terrible I am for making a mistake. Oh, I hate it. It's fine. All right. Bye. I put on the big light because it's super dark. <laughs> um, so I just got done wrapping some gifts and I sat down to look at my schedule for tomorrow and get some things printed out. So I wanted to show you what that looks like. Um, I'm still using these cards that I made from the last one, but this time I'm gonna start incorporating some of these, which is something great I saw and a, an idea that you might take away. Um, recently, I've just been giving them good feedback. I haven't been giving them something that they can try out. So I'm going to start to shift that a little bit and see how that goes. The other thing that I have is the fidelity checklist or it's more like implementation information. So for each of the routines, they these are the routines up here. There are certain criteria that we're looking for. So it really just helps me remember because I don't meet with them right away to give them feedback um, or else I'll just, I forget <laughs> to be honest. So I have those printed out ready to go along with the previous ones from the last few times that I've done it. I've then created the schedule over here between some things that they've requested that we look for. Also, when are we meeting to discuss versus when are we meeting to observe? Um, so that is all written out here. So that is all inside of here. Let me show you the front. And then I have my initials on here. This is from Leatherology, I believe is how it's pronounced, Leatherology. It's beautiful. I love it. So this is what I end up carrying around. And then I just have a backpack with my laptop in it just in case. But um, everything is ready to go. My laptop is currently charging. My dog is sleeping. Um, and nothing else has been unpacked. So just in case you were wondering, no, I did not unpack everything else. I am feeling exhausted and ready for bed. So I'm going to start to get the kids in bed. And then I will wake up bright and early to head to the school. So let me put these away properly. Um, today was a busy day. My throat still hurts. I always say that every time I present, it's like the first day of school because my throat hurts afterwards from talking so much since I'm not used to doing it as much anymore. All right. 
I am getting ready for bed and I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday and today is the last day that I will work this week. Tomorrow I have off, um, which is great because I'm not feeling the best of the best. So today I am headed to a school. This is a school that I work with uh, consistently every single week. They are part of a grant for the state of Pennsylvania, and I am working with somebody from Patton to provide coaching supports. So I come at it from all lenses. I'm the expert, the facilitator, <laughs> the coach, the mentor, all of the things. So today is a coaching day. I am going to go to Chick-fil-A first this morning and grab a... Uh, wrap for lunch because I'm going to be there all day. I won't leave until probably around three o'clock. So it is frosty. I'm going to put my uh, heat thing back on to defrost my windows and let's go grab some Chick-fil-A. Currently in line at Chick-fil-A. I forgot my wallet at home. Luckily, I can pay with Apple Pay <laughs> through the window. Oh my gosh. Guys, I am just not having the best week. As hard as I'm trying to have it together, I am not having it together. Um, and I don't think I mentioned yesterday that my microphone never worked yesterday. Did I mention this? I can't even remember. So as hard as we tried to get it to work, which was crazy because before the session started, we were like outside of the library and there was kind of this open space and we were just standing there. And so I took out the microphone, I took out my phone, I took out the speaker and I connected it. It worked. But as soon as we stepped foot into the library to get ready to do the session, it did not connect after that, which is very frustrating. So. I did have to just use my normal voice. I told them, listen, my voice is not the best. I'm not going to yell today. <laughs> so it was fine. They were great. They were wonderful. I did have to stop and pause for a few times, but luckily it went really, really well. Um, now I'm just standing in line waiting for my Chick-fil-A. I have a Diet Coke. I got waffle chips. I got a spicy cool wrap sandwich and um a sand like a breakfast sandwich because why not yolo you know what i mean yolo i am still driving it is about an hour drive for me to get to this elementary school and i like to listen to podcasts so i'm listening to a podcast right now it is the mel robbins podcast um i like i like her like no nonsensical, I'm not putting up with this attitude when it comes to things. So the podcast episode is all on how to beat procrastination, how to overcome procrastination, which is something Michelle and I talk a lot about on Teaching to the Top. <laughs> so she has this doctor on, Dr. Ferrari. He's great. He's got like such a awesome attitude and I also think he's like very no-nonsense goal he's tells it like it is kind of situation I'm enjoying the episode a lot to the point where I feel like I would go back and re-listen to it well we're at a section here that I thought would be really great to mention on the podcast because it pertains to education and so on the podcast or on her episode she is trying to get the doctor to break down how to overcome procrastination because the, he's saying that procrastination is learned. You can stop being a procrastinator. It is not something that you are born with, nor is it something that is just who you are. Like you can unlearn it. And so he is describing it as if a procrastinator gets to a forest, they look at the forest and they're like, oh, it's such a big task, such a big forest. And then he says, um, and if you can't do the forest, then what about a tree? Can you cut down a tree? It said, if you can't do the tree, can you cut down a couple of branches? And if you can't do the branches, can you take a few leaves? Like talking about baby steps. Well, Mel's not having it. She's like, 
I want to know a tangible. Like, like let's look at a, a, an example. And she mentions on there because the doctor's like, you're looking for a cure. And she's like, no, I'm not looking for a cure. And this is the part where I think it applies to education really well. Is that she said, I'm not looking for the cure. I'm trying to take what doctors and researchers are out there talking about and I'm trying to make it applicable. I'm trying to break it down for the people that are listening and helping them understand how to take these theories, these ideas and actually put it into practice. And that is a really big problem with education in general because we have so much science, we have so many theories, and all of these like big research pieces that have been out there saying you need to do this, but what does that look like when you're trying to put it into the classroom? Like, what is it supposed to be like? Like, how do I take this concept and put it into a classroom of 25 kids with like five that have really big behavior issues with six that are on different grade levels when I'm trying to work with a schedule that does not fit for or isn't conducive to like real good learning because it's constantly being chopped up. You know, or that I have learning support teachers who are pulling during my reading block time. I have, you know, speech pathologists, OTs that are being pulled from my uh, reading time. And so what am I supposed to do with that? And so the biggest problem here is not that we don't understand. Whoops, <laughs> my car shifted. It's not that we don't understand the science. I think we get the science. What we struggle with in education is taking that science and making it applicable to the classroom. Like what does that actually look like with all these other things that we have going on? So I think I just thought it's interesting that she she's mentioning it here um, because she's like I'm trying to do a good job of helping people who are writing in talking about that they're struggling and that they don't know how to like break this down I think it's the same thing in education all right so it is the next day I never picked the camera back up because I went home and I went to bed um, overall Yesterday went really well. We had a great coaching session. I think teachers were just kind of like, it's about a week before Christmas break and I completely recognize that. Um, so now we are in Harrisburg. Trent's with me. He's just right here. <laughs> and we came to a chocolate place and it is so freaking good, guys. Um, it's Frederick Chocolates. Um, and he is just such a wonderful, lovely person that we sat and we chatted with him for a little bit. But I received a box of chocolates on Thursday when I was coaching with the patent person that I go to the school with. I opened it up and I just loved the chocolates. So we decided that we were going to buy some for some gifts that we have a little bit later on but I also got some other goodies so I wanted to show these to you really quick um so we have a box of caramels caramels do you say caramels or caramels I say caramel I say caramels caramels Car caramels <laughs> so I have a box of these do you want to try one open it up let's try one. Oh, I didn't see that. and yes. then I got more chocolates for myself because how do I come and not get chocolates these are the most beautiful chocolates I have ever seen in my life. So here's the bag of, of chocolates. I want that yellow one. The yellow one, the banana. Mm -hmm. So it was a banana and caramel one. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna make a mess. I'm so sorry, <laughs> hold on. Off screen, they are all over her lap. Okay, now. so this is what it looks like. That is gorgeous, okay. well. Um, do you remember what the blue one is? Look at that chocolate. Mm, the blue one lavender was honey. lavender honey. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, they're so good. It's like very thin, very delicate. It's not mm. overly sweet. Let me have that white one now. The white one's really good. Vanilla bean. This is vanilla bean. And it's just very smooth. Like, yeah, so smooth. the best, the best chocolates. So, mm. so we bought some for some gifts. So we have some boxes. What's really nice is that he ships. So I am going to leave um, a link in the description. He does not advertise out in public, so it's all word of mouth. When I tell you that these chocolates are amazing, they're absolutely amazing. Um, so two different sizes. This is the bigger size. This one was $44. This was $23 for the smaller pack. But it's just a really nice gift, yeah, I think. really quality. Quality really chocolates. And it's just really, really lovely. How's the caramel? Delicious. No, you can um... I want to try one. So this is what this one is. Is it good? Yeah, I know. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. How did you manage to make a mess out of that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm really good at making a mess out of anything. Mmm. It's just what's so nice about it is that it's not overly sweet. Yeah, the perfect one. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> I almost choked. It almost has a toffee taste to it. Or maybe mm. this is what I like about toffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not overly sweet. And it's just a really nice sweet treat without it being mm -hmm. something that I feel like consumes you like to the point where you want more and more and more really really delicious um so please please go and check him out order some just to give it a, a try because it's just really it's a nice little sweet treat this would be perfect for any sort form of like special occasion so yeah i'll leave a, a link now we have to drive should you do a how long did it take do a giveaway we can order one online and send it to them oh we could do that do a, do a small box. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to do... I don't know when it stopped recording. So we're going to do a giveaway because we really love the person, the owner of mm -hmm. this restaurant, of this chocolate place. It's just, he's absolutely wonderful. The chocolate is divine. I highly recommend it. So we're going to do a giveaway. Trent's idea. So all you have to do is if you would like to be entered into receiving a small box of chocolates, just put your name down in the comments. All you have to do is just say, hey, please enter me in the giveaway on Monday night. I'm going to pick somebody and then I will just have you DM me so that I can send you a box of chocolates because they're delicious. Yeah? Yeah, this is a good one. Now it's time to drive all the way home. Where's my phone? Because it took us 40 minutes to get here? 30 minutes? 40 yeah, minutes? Yeah, it wasn't nearly as bad. Traffic is... Not as bad. Bugger. But it is a drive for us. So now we've got our chocolates and we are going to head back home. Okay, so I am officially back. Just got done making the boys grilled cheese and not the way that I used to make it when I was little. <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, because I often get made fun of, of how I used to make a grilled cheese. You are sniffing the chocolates. No, you cannot have it. I know. I see you. I see you. You are not allowed to have them. You're very cute. Yes. Okay. He needs attention, apparently. Um, <clears throat> so, Trent had to step out for just a little bit. He went to go and do some work. And I need to listen to a pod, or not a podcast, an audiobook on a book that we're going to be doing for the podcast in January. The book is called Essentialism. If you want to read it and do kind of like the book overview, we do a book like talk club type situation every January and then every July, I believe. I believe it's July. So join us on that. Go and check out the book. 
listen to it, read it, whatever it might be. Maybe you'll get something productivity wise from it. Um, but that's what we're going to be recording on Sunday. So I need to listen to the book so that I can offer my very insightful thoughts. <laughs> uh, don't forget that if you want to do the little giveaway, just feel free to comment down into the comments that you would like to be a part of the giveaway and not making this anything super big and fancy, but um, you have to be within the U.S. because shipping is just like, whoa. <laughs> so you do have to be a part of the U.S. in order to be able to win this. Um, I also believe that you have to be 18 years or older. It's like the general guidelines for any form of a giveaway that I can do. So I... Um, We'll be checking out the comments and then I will contact somebody once you are going to win and then I'll send you a box of chocolates from Fredericks and it's going to be so delicious. Blaine wants another one. Yeah, babe. All right. I'm going to go make him another grilled cheese, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this little behind the scenes week of my new position and just getting, getting an idea of what other jobs and education possibly look like. I know it's always really interesting. I'm very interested in that. So I hopefully you are also enjoying the same thing. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you have not already and I will catch you all very, very soon. Bye.